So in 2020 we got this Evercade retro handheld console and it probably was more successful than I actually thought it was going to be. It bucked the trend, it was in a niche market all by itself with physical media. So you had all these carts. I really didn't think this thing was going to take off but it seemed to be quite successful. But it definitely didn't have a great screen. Um, it had some issues with some viewing angles etc and it's not the best quality. But fast forward a couple of years and we have ourselves an upgrade. So here we have it, the Evercade EXP with games from Capcom which is now bucking the trend of physical media, it's included within the actual device. Is it worth purchasing? Is it worth upgrading from your original Evercade handheld for? Should you buy one? Let's find out together, next! Hi guys and welcome to Crazy Burger. We're going to be looking at Evercade's latest handheld, which is the Evercade EXP cartridge video game system, playing pretty much retro games. And we've got lots of games included. We've got an Irem cart which is included in the box. And we've got preloaded games on the handheld from Capcom. Not sure if that's going to be a thing going forward. Yep, there's no cart for that, which is a little bit disappointing. But yeah, here we go, we've got it. I'm going to unbox it, give you my thoughts. Uh, and see what the product is actually like. So guys, before we get open the box, um, I bought the pack from Funstock and it came complete with this handy pouch, which I think is great for putting your Evercade EXP into um, and keeping it clean and tidy away. Now inside here is some extras as well. It's a Blaze insert cartridge keyring, which is kind of cool. There you go, Evercade EXP. Uh, also, there is some pin badges inside this as well, which came complete with this pack that I purchased. Evercade EXP, um, Tati Mode, uh, Magnet, and you've got a, it's a white EXP handheld pin badge. They are just pin badges, as you can see, that was included for free. So I'll add that to my collection now, which is kind of cool. Okay, so this is the pouch that came with it. Just uh, to let you know there are two sections, one for your EXP and one to put tons of games. That was something that was bad about the original um, pouch, it only could fit maybe four games at best, maybe five or six at a tight squeeze, but that's a decent, decent um, pouch that comes with it and I'm definitely going to be using this a lot. Okay, before we get started, we'll have a very quick look at the box and what it's got the detail. There's nothing really much to see. See the side here, you've got some details on the bottom of what's actually in there, built in all the games. The usual copyright details, blah blah blah. Irem cartridge included, which I guess is nice, save you actually having to buy it. It's a decent enough cart to be included. Um, and on the back here you've got lots of information about save state, scan light filters, play HD, uh, the Tate mode. Um, some of the information here, we've got uh, 45 hours battery time, probably just slightly more than the original. Yep, you've got Wi-Fi because the original did not have Wi-Fi. Um, and it's got now USB-C charging, which is really good. So it's definitely been upgraded, there's no doubt about it. And yeah, there's got tons more carts that you can buy. There's over 300 games now, maybe about 30 odd carts. If you're purchasing for the first time, there is plenty to get your teeth stuck into. Let's open this box. Okay, let's slide this sleeve off. This is what you're greeted with. Retro gaming leveled up. Pretty much a plain black box. Let's open it up now. And you are greeted with the Evercade EXP. This is obviously the white edition. Now obviously there is a black edition and obviously condolences out to everyone that's got um, a limited edition ordered a black one. It's obviously not going to arrive. Unless you live in the EU, it's not going to arrive probably till next year now and that's quite sad. So sorry for all those that are waiting. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at the white one. Quite like you can see the handheld. Actually seems certainly a little bit heavier than the um, original one. First impressions seem pretty good. Some nice clicky buttons, seems a decent quality build. But yeah, we'll put that to the side just one minute and then we'll have a look at what else is actually in the box. Um, just lift this up. So also in the box we've got your iRream collection cart. You've got a USB-C charging cable, that's quite nice that they included it. So we've got a Capcom manual which you can read through and there's a quick start guide as well. That's quite important guys to learn this part here, hold for two seconds um, when you're turning it on and off otherwise nothing will happen. Pretty similar to the VS if you've got one you need to hold down that button to actually plug the thing on. 
there you go. That's your quick guide. There is a full guide and um, questions and answers on Evercade's own website. So I'll leave that in the description if you want to know a little bit more information, just in case there's some issues that you come across that I've not covered in this video. Just for the record, on the other side of the uh, start guide, you've got some information there. But tape mode and some of the lights um, on the bottom. LED light charging, booting up, low battery, blah blah blah. There's more information on Evercade's website about all of that. Okay, so this is the iRream Arcade cart. Um, there are six games. I'm not really sure I like the, the back of these carts, to be honest. There's not information about every single game, just a few of them. Um, I like the front, though. The design is definitely much better than before. Um, yeah, so let's maybe get this opened up as well. We'll have a quick look at Capcom Collection 1. We've got a nice manual here. Um, which is obviously for the pre-packed games. Yep, there's no cart for this. It's really just a nice detailed manual. Some moves. Lots of information, I guess. They think Street Fighter 2 is the big game here. Of course, it's a massive game. Personally, I prefer Final Fight. That's the one I'd rather have loads of pages about. But yeah, that's just me. So, that's actually really quite nice. Cool. Just have a quick look at the iRIM cart, there's the actual cartridge. You've got your manual as usual, which is always nice. We'll look at this in more detail in a separate video, guys, but I'm just having a brief look at this um, for the purpose of this video about iRIM. Obviously, our type is the big, massive game that's included in this cart. Not a fan myself, because I'm really no good at shooters, but I can recognise that it's a quality game. Um, I preferred In the Hunt myself. Moon Patrol's a good, fun game to it. Plenty of details about all these games, which is always nice. Lightning Swords, kind of a shinobi style game, 10 yard fight, which you know doesn't look good, but it's actually good fun to play. And lots of different carts information. Let's have a look at the EXP. Okay, so let's have a look at the EXP itself. Now, it is very, very white. What's disappointing for me is there's probably could have been doing with some kind of um, red stripe or something just to sort of give it that nod to the original handheld. It looks very plain. It almost, almost looks like it's uh, still a pre-production model to me. Um, just because there's a very lack of detail on the actual unit. I mean, there's no doubt it's very good quality. There's no doubt about that. I'm just saying it really could be doing with an added, you know, like a go faster stripe kind of thing. Much like the original had a red stripe. I think it would have been nice to have a subtle stripe. Um, but yeah, this D-pad feels fantastic. These are the Tati mode buttons, um, A and B. Obviously you use the Tati mode button, which is down here. You press that, it should then swivel your games so you can play this and use the A, B down at the bottom here um, if you're in Tati mode. Um, but yeah, the menu button seems kind of clicky, which is kind of odd. Um, these two buttons, you've got your start. You can probably hardly see the details there. Start and select. They seem okay, I'm really not keen on these style buttons to be honest, I'd rather they were a bit more um, larger, I guess that's just in case you accidentally press them. The A, B, X, Y buttons seem fine as well, there's no issues here, just having a look. They're not sticky, there's good travel in them, absolutely fine. Yeah, very nice and sleek, just having a look at that screen. The bezel does seem to sit quite far down under the, the, the screen there, but... You probably can't tell on the camera, but it does look really nice. So obviously on the back here you've got your new double trigger buttons on each side, which is fantastic. There's not really that many games that use the, the double triggers, which is a bit weird why they would want that. But I guess it's just to bring it in line with the VS. Um, but I guess, hopefully, there will be more games coming in the future that will utilise um, both of these buttons. Um, because at present there's probably only a handful, um, maybe two or three at best. Obviously it's the PlayStation games mainly, but there's no re reason why you couldn't button map a few extra games that you could utilise these buttons anyway. They actually feel quite nice though, good quality. This is your on-off switch at the top. Um, you've got your mini HDMI out, which you can obviously then display onto your TV, which I'll show in the video as well. Um, at the bottom, before we look at the back, you've got your LED light. This will light up in a few different colours depending on the status of your console, charging, etc. That kind of thing. And you've got your very strange looking uh, volume up and down buttons. Hmm. They seem weird. 
And you've got your USB-C charging, which is good. It's a change from the original. That's really good. Bring it up to present. You've got your headphone socket and uh, you've got your Tati mode. On the back, you've got some vents by the look of it here as well. Um, I'm not sure if this is for sound. Yeah, there's one of these. Oh, there. There's your speakers at the bottom. Dual speakers. So these must be kind of a vents, I guess, to prevent overheating. Um, obviously, because this is a 1.5 gigahertz, much in the line... Uh, with the VS speed. Um, I'll leave the stats on the screen if you're interested in that. It's obviously got uh, more internal memory than the original um, handheld and it's uh, certainly got a faster processor. And there you've got the Evercade cartridge slot. Now let's give that a test with some carts before we actually turn it on because there was some reports that some carts are quite tight. Now if you own some of the original carts from back in the day they may well still be tight but if you purchased any carts recently they'll be absolutely fine, so please do not panic. This is more going to affect some of the original carts that were released in 2020. This problem has now been fixed. Okay guys, just doing a little bit of cart testing just to make sure that the carts fit in okay. You see, this is the, the most recent one and it slides in absolutely fine and comes out absolutely fine. Here's Alwa's Cathedral and the size of that is absolutely fine too. So most of these earlier, uh, later carts should be fine. Um, here's a Xeno Crisis Tanglewood, absolutely fine, no problems at all. Um, let's have a look at maybe one of the arcade carts. The East slides in fine. So let's find some earlier carts. Here we have the very first cart. Will this fit in okay? You see, it's obviously a little bit tight, definitely tighter, but it's went in okay. Can it get out okay? Hmm. No. Jesus. That is very tight. There's no doubt about it. That is very tight. I'm not going to get that just by squeezing. And... Nope. Yep. So yeah, those early carts are definitely tight. Need to get some kind of blunt edge. I wouldn't recommend getting a Stanley knife. Because no matter what you do here, you can't actually get into that. You could maybe... Yep. I'm going to break that trying to get it out. Okay, so I've really not got any luck. I've been using a blunt end of an instrument trying to push this out and it's really not wanting to come out. You can see I've actually rubbed the lettering away from the cart here on the Atari and I've sort of damaged a little bit of it and it's just not wanting to budge. So you can probably see why some people would want to put a Stanley knife in there to try and get it out. I'll probably try and find a, a small screwdriver instead to try and pull out but Either way, that is an absolute disaster. I mean, I know these carts were tight on the original and the purple version that I got, but this is terrible. It's They're so much tighter than they should be. The fact that you have to go through this um, is ridiculous. I mean, it's obviously been made far too small for these carts to fit into. Um, and it's just heightened and made the problem a lot, lot worse. Now, this won't be for everyone. If you've got these carts recently, it won't be a problem for you. Um, it's only going to be for the early adopters from 2020. Um, and it was only a small percentage. But regardless, you're going to be uh, wary about sticking some of these carts in your device. Because you'll probably end up damaging the carts. Or even, at worst, the device. I'm going to try and find a screwdriver and see if I can try and get this out without damaging the unit now. Okay guys, so after a little bit of palaver, I found this sort of tool that I used for uh, working on the Nintendo Switch and sort of fixing some devices and it managed to get it up a little bit and I've obviously managed to get it out. Now it's obviously got a slight blunt edge, it's probably the most ideal thing um, to try and release this without injuring yourself or even damaging the unit. Now beware guys, I would suggest not to try and put any of these old carts in because you are most likely going to hurt yourself, damage the carts in some way. Um, so just be very, very wary of that. I wouldn't stick any of these old carts in at all. That's not good. Okay guys, what we're going to do now, now that we've got the, the cart out, we're going to turn the unit on. Um, and what I'd suggest now is probably, I'm going to go through the setup um, off camera and do the Wi-Fi update. When you get your device, probably really important to go through the Wi-Fi update. You can see green light says it's actually booting up. It's flashing a little bit. There's different sort of stages here. Um, but yeah, let's see the official that we've seen before, our KDXP. That's kind of cool. Okay, when you boot it up and you get your Wi-Fi connected, you will be greeted with this. Obviously, you need to update your our KDXP with some important updates. But you need to make sure it's charged to 50%. So, we'll need to do that first. And I'll be back very soon. 
Although, before we do that, I want to touch on something that I noticed just as I was updating the Wi-Fi information. Okay, so I had to dim the lights a little bit, just so you can see. There's a lot of light bleed down the bottom of the actual device. That is pretty bad. Um, not a major big problem for me, and the device is now kicked off. It's now in standby mode. You can see it's now flashing. Just press any button to get away from that. But yeah, you can see that's actually quite bad. You probably won't notice it too much during the day, but if you're maybe playing lying in bed or at night, you can clearly see that's actually pretty bad. I've not seen that in too many devices, but that's actually quite a lot of uh, light bleeding. Okay guys, before we move on, we'll have some quick size comparison to some other devices. This is the original handheld. You can see it's slightly longer than the original handheld. Um, the screen itself is exactly the same size, although the resolution is slightly more on this. It being a 480p, I think it is. Okay, so this is in comparison to a PS Vita. You can see the size is it's slightly bigger than that, but the screen on the PS Vita is a lot larger than the Evercade EXP. Interesting. As you can see here, this is the Nintendo Switch OLED model and you can see it's completely dwarfed. The size of the unit is a little bit smaller and the screen is nowhere near the size of that Nintendo Switch OLED. Nowhere near. Okay, probably not a fair size comparison, but you can get a look at what it's like in comparison to a Steam Deck. It's quite a lot smaller, it probably could fit inside the size of the actual screen itself. It's uh, so much smaller. To be fair, the Steam Deck isn't really a fair comparison. This thing is an absolute beast. So, interesting comparison. This is to my favourite Anbernic device. This is the Anbernic RG552. And it's actually very similar in sizes. But you can see that the Anbernic has a massive screen compared to the EXP. Um, yeah, quite a difference. But, similar size units, funny enough. I think ideally the EXP could have had a screen similar to that or maybe a little bit smaller but this is like this is what you could have had. Yeah, maybe next time. Okay, something I'm not entirely sure about. I've got the, the actual device off and it's charging but I'm not sure if it's actually charging or not. Um, I thought there'd be a light on there to tell us that it would be charging. Hmm, not sure. It's a little bit strange. It was charging when it was actually on but now I've turned it off. I have no idea. Okay guys, so let's have a look at the device now turned on. The Wi-Fi has been added and the firmware has been updated. So we've got a few options. Obviously there's no cartridge inserted, so we can't really do anything at this particular moment in time. You've got the EXP uh, menu and this is where all your Capcom games are. It sort of takes a few seconds to load and this lists all the Capcom games that you've got to play. Which is quite cool. We'll come back to that in a minute. You've got hidden games. At the moment there is five to unlock. I know what those are and I will let you know later in the video, but first we'll go through everything else first. Um, there's also this section, Evercade, coming soon, which I think most likely is going to be for additional features and your Indie Heroes Game of the Month, which should kickstart sometime in January 2023 or thereabouts, I guess. We are still waiting on Indie Heroes Game for... Um, December, not sure if that will drop, I don't think it will, I think it will be January for the Indie Heroes Collection 3 that they'll kickstart I guess. So jumping into the settings, you should be familiar with a lot of this that you've seen on the VS and or the original handheld if you've updated the firmware. Usual options, original aspect ratio, pixel perfect full screen. Um, you've got shaders, scan lines, it's really up to you, you want to put these on or off. Got a mixture of bezels. Again, up to you if you want these on. Sometimes I find them quite distracting. Um, sometimes I find these quite distracting, so I really just leave the bezels off. But there's a few different options there um, if you're interested in turning that on. Tape bezels, it's up to you again if you want to sort of turn these on, off. Um, if you're playing in tape mode, uh, I don't really get that. I guess if you're playing a game that's tape related but not in tape mode, that'll be that. I'm not sure what the point of that is. Um, but there are obviously if you play some games in tape mode, there are borders at the top and bottom of the screen. Um, but we'll cover that when we get to there. 
Um, you've got dynamic rate control. I don't really know what this is. It's currently disabled. It may be something to do with some of the um, frame rates, maybe for certain games. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. Brightness is fully all up. Um, you've got screen dimming. Now this is really just a, a screen saver. It will turn off after a minute by default. Um, which is kind of annoying, just press any button and it will turn back off again So it's really up to you, you want to just turn that off yeah, It gets really just a battery saver function uh, at the end of the day um, So the other option at the bottom here um, is sort of display scan lines for the menu Pointless, but as you can hear here guys You've got the annoying beep um, And you can't actually turn it off, I couldn't see anywhere to actually turn this off um, which is kind of annoying because that was something that was brought up in the original handheld and then it was updated in a, a later firmware to remove the beep um, so it's kind of a strange that they've not actually learned from that and not give you the option to turn that on or off so you have to put up with it and it does sound a little bit tinny and um, one good thing I need to comment here is that there is background music much like the VS and it's actually quite cool it's specific for the EXP and it, it's actually quite nice so you've got a few different um, themes to choose from You've got dark, I think it's got Evercade Grid just now. I really don't know which what you prefer, you can sort of change it like that. Dunno. It really is a personal choice. I don't really care what one it is to be honest. Um I'm not really a big fan of this one. Uh, but well maybe blue and gold looks quite good. I'll just go for the dark Evercade grid. Yeah, I kinda of prefer that one. Okay, so sound. Again it's all set to maximum. There's not really an awful lot of options here. Sound, I felt that once we play some games you maybe hear that sound isn't great. It feels a bit tinny and it doesn't feel like it could... It could be a lot louder and you can't even mute it. Um, that's another thing as well. You turn the sound down to the, the very lowest sound. There is still some sound there, which is kind of a strange. Network's just your Wi-Fi stuff. Accessibility, toggle the con high contrast mode if you want to. Um, just much like the VS languages, you've got a few different options. System tells you what firmware I'm updated to 3.01 at the time of this video. That's the current one. Legal and support, all your usual gar uh, jargon uh, for the different collections, credits, credits with all the people that have worked on this project. Secret. So this is where you would add some secret codes if you're aware of any. I'll come back to this in a little minute. I'm um, obviously aware of a few. Whether they work at the moment, I do not know. Um, but let's have a look at one that I'm certainly aware of that may or may not work. Not sure if these are all set up or good to go or what, but we'll soon find out. Just press the start button. So press circuit brings up this. This is stuff that you've seen on the uh, VS and it really just unlocks a few pictures, maybe some games as well. So we'll cover that in a minute. And that's really all the settings. So what we'll do now is jump into the Capcom games. Um, and so you can see there's a few different options here. You've got this new set coin limit which um, you can add if you want to. If you don't want to just have unlimited credits. You can maybe add um, a limit to the amount of coins that you've got maybe to spend. Which is just utterly pointless in my view. I don't see why you would want to do that. It's not something I'm going to be doing personally. Um, so for me that's just a wasted thing that they've added there. So that's that, they're just some controls. There's, you can't change the controls in these Capcom games at present. I think in a future firmware update there will be some options to sort of choose your sort of control layout. You may have different options but at present it's just what Blaze have picked and that's probably not the, <laughs> the best layout for me. But yeah let's have a quick bash at this. You can obviously press the Y button it will activate competition mode as well which you've seen on the VS. Another option that I'm never going to use. So this is how games would look, um, obviously you've got your select button down here to insert a coin and then press start. So I've got the sound at the maximum at the minute, um, but for me it doesn't seem loud enough. And obviously this is how you would play it, but if you want to switch to tape mode, press the button. Ideally if you were playing these games in tape mode you'd probably want to rest this on something because it is quite, it's a top heavy, you'd probably get a little bit sore and tired in your, your sort of wrists or your hands. Um, if you're playing it like this, but um, I probably would lean it. I would probably lean it on my my belly or a, or a tabletop or something rather than um, just sort of holding it steady like that because it would get quite tiresome. It is quite heavy to sort of hold. The unit is a little bit heavier than the original, but not massively so. 
So to switch back, you can just press the button again, and you can see it switches very quickly. So that is quite impressive. The only thing I don't like is that you've got these borders at the top. I guess that can't be helped, but you can actually change that if you want to fill the screen. So if you scroll down to the display settings, you can actually make it full screen if you want to. It might give that slight stretched feeling to it right enough as you can see, but it does fill the screen. It just looks a little bit stretched, so it's really going to be a personal choice at the end of the day. Okay, we'll have a quick look at 1942 since that's also a um, tape mode game. You can see there's some warnings here for some games that have flashing lights. Um, if this sort of affects you uh, with epilepsy sort of thing. So that's quite a nice touch that they've added here. So again, you probably want to have this long ways. Uh, so I'll just press the button. I've got the screen still stretched. Now some games might look better than others if you've got the stretched screen. Um, and sometimes you might want to play it less. Other times you'll probably want to just put it in normal. This one doesn't look too bad. I mean, this tape mode function is definitely quite cool, but for me at the end of the day, it is still very much a novelty. Um, and it does help play some of these games that are really unplayable uh, as they are normally on the, the screen with uh, the sort of normal aspect ratio. It just doesn't look right at all. So the tape mode is a welcome function uh, to play a lot of these games, and it's, it's definitely far, far better. And no doubt you can probably put this onto your TV as well, which I'll do later in the video. And if you've got a swivel monitor, you could probably swivel that monitor as well and play uh, the tate mode on your monitor or TV. Obviously your TVs don't swivel, but <laughs> I'm sure someone will try. It definitely looks really nice. That screen is really cool. We'll do some comparisons on that shortly as well to the original. There's no doubt Final Fight is one of my all time favourite arcade games and this definitely pops in the screen, it looks really nice. The only thing I don't like, and this sound is up to the maximum, it's not loud enough and the sound's a little bit tinny for me, it just doesn't sound right. It's like something's missing or wrong. I mean the loudest setting is probably fine for playing but you feel like it really could be a lot louder. Uh, louder. Um, the button mapping's a bit rubbish as well. I'd rather the buttons were swapped around. I'd rather the buttons were swapped around for jump and punch here. But looks really nice, no doubt about it. Looks really, really nice. We've certainly got the emulation absolutely spot on. There's no doubt there. But yeah, some other options that you can add to the display settings. So a few different things you can do with the display settings. You can also make that pixel perfect, but it does make the screen a little bit smaller. And um, you can add some scan lines as well, which obviously kind of makes it look a little bit more like the arcade back in the day. Um, so some people prefer it like this. This actually looks not too bad. It's a personal choice, honestly. You could mess about with this and, I don't know, at the end of the day it doesn't really matter. It's how you like to play your games. Um, but the emulation in this is absolutely fantastic. Apart from the sound, I think the sound could be better. That's a unit problem rather than... Um, the actual emulation, I guess, but seems good. So again, you can save, if you press the menu button on here, you can actually save your progress um, into the slots, then you can sort of load them back in again. A previous save, it works. They all work extremely well, um, so that's quite good. So something I don't really like is these start and select buttons are quite different to the original uh, handheld. I don't like the design. I feel as if I accidentally press these buttons quite frequently. Um, and same with the tape mode. Sometimes I've accidentally pressed that button and it's went in the tape mode by mistake. Same with the on off switch. Uh, sorry, button. I'd rather this was actually a slider like the original. I feel as if I may accidentally turn that off. Also. There's no cart in here, but if you actually feel the back of this, there's a lot of heat um, in the back of there. Um, and a few carts that I've pulled out have been very hot indeed when I pulled them out. So that's kind of a bit concerning going forward. So you can maybe understand why there's a few vents um, on the back here to maybe try and get some air, some cooling into the unit. Okay, so let's have a look at Forgotten Worlds. I was interested to play this because the sort of button mapping is quite good. That They've button mapped the rotation of the um, sort of guys that you play to the L1 and R1 button. I was hoping they would actually do that. It makes a lot of sense. 
um, and it certainly makes the game a little bit more playable. It's a tough game to play regardless anyway, um, but yeah, let's see. You can see you press the L1 R1 to rotate. It still makes it quite tricky to play, so it takes a little bit of getting used to, but I think that's probably the, the most sensible thing that they could have done with the controls, and it, and it makes a lot of sense. It does work. Maybe they don't turn quick enough, or maybe I'm just not good enough, <laughs> I do not know. Such a tough game to play though. No doubt that screen is fantastic, we'll just sort of give you a closer up. See the viewing angles? Absolutely brilliant, no matter what way you look. That was the, the common issue with the first unit, no doubt. So might as well try the Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting. Now personally I would have preferred maybe Championship Edition or another version because Hyper Fighting is quite a difficult version uh, of Street Fighter. So let's have a bash at that now. So another annoying feature is Street Fighter 2. It's a two player game but you can't play two player on this. There's no way of connecting another device. So it seems a little bit of a missed opportunity. Maybe at some point we'll get a cart. Maybe at some point we'll be able to play these in the VS. We can but hope. It just seems like a, a massive missed opportunity not to have two player games on these absolute crackers. So I've turned the scan lines off again but I kind of feel as if I missed them now. But yeah, I'm going to show up my lack of skills in this game completely. It is really, really tough. So definitely the D-pad sort of helps to try and pull off those Hadoukens and other sort of <laughs> uh, moves which obviously I'm only mildly aware of having played this a lot back in the day. But yeah, I'm still pretty pants in this game. I'm trying, honestly. <laughs> I'm trying. I'll just keep doing that. <laughs> Maybe it'll work. Yeah, it worked. Okay, practice definitely needed. You definitely need to know those special moves. Refer to your manual because they're, they're in there to help you. Okay, guys, what I'm going to do now is look at these hidden games. Um, and they're five to find. Um, I think I know most of them. A lot of them are button combinations. Um, I believe some of them you have to actually have the cart not in. So I've not got a cart in as yet. So I'm certainly mindful to make sure some of these might not work with a cart in. Um, so what we'll do is the first one that I'm aware of is Gotris. Now if you don't want to know about this, please skip this chapter because I don't want to ruin the surprise for anybody if you want to find them out yourself. But it's a sneak hint, they are already on the VS. So that's um, and there is a website, evercade.info, if you want to know all the details. I'll leave that link in the description. So the first one is Gotris, which is L2, R2, select at the same time. Um, that should then... Oh, so we need to make sure we're on this screen. L2, R2, select. Select L2, R2. There you go. Just hold them down and then you can play Gotris. And once you've actually unlocked them, the good thing about this is they, they'll always remain on this unit. You don't need to go through that rigmarole of playing, uh, doing that sort of shortcut every single time, much like the VS. So that's a nice touch that I've added that I'm really pleased about that. This is a quite a cool game. It's kind of a, like a Columns Come Tetris style game. Quite a nice game, it um, takes a little bit of getting used to, you need to basically surround your coloured pieces with the other coloured pieces. Sounds simple, yeah, <laughs> it's not really. But, there anyway, we go, that's that unlocked, which is good. So, once we go to the hidden screen, you can see now that that game is unlocked. So, let's go back to the main screen without the cart. So, go to this section again, let's look at the next one. The next one should be, let's see, L1, R1 and then up. Okay, so L1, R1 and up uh, unlocks N, which obviously includes the Evercade mascot, um, Cady. So let's have a quick bash at that. And this is just a very simple game of trying to avoid the, the blocks that are going across the screen as long as you possibly can, which is practically impossible to be lasting any longer than a few seconds. Yep. I think my record was probably about six seconds, if if that. <laughs> no laughing in the back. Yeah, it's so hard. 
I think if you last any longer than that, it's probably, it's, I'm not sure it's skill, it's probably just luck. Anyway, that's that one. So, you can see we've now got two hidden games unlocked. So, the next one that we need to unlock should be Spacey McRacy. So, back to the main screen. Um, press L1 and R1 and down. So, it's basically the opposite from the last game that we just done. And then we have Spacey McRacy. And that's quite a cool game as well, but... Not games you would want to pay, play, uh, sorry, pay for, but they're games that are worth a bash anyway. And again, this one's probably a four-player game, so it kind of a doesn't make a lot of sense to be included here. So you're really just playing yourself against the, the computer, and you just need to try and get to the, the top, take the enemies out. I think I'm the blue guy. Oh, no, no, I'm the red guy. <laughs> you get more points by staying at the, the front for the longest possible time. Pretty hard. Let's see, I'm gathering up loads of points here by staying at the lead and taking out the enemies as well and not dying. Yeah, kind of fun, but I guess it's better playing alongside some other friends on the VS. So on here, it's it's kind of pointless. But yeah, that's another game added. So the next game should be. Let me see if I can remember what they are. So the next game should be Gribbly Grobly. So that by that we need to jump into the secret section. This was the C64 game that was added. I'll try and fast forward this so you don't need to get bored. Gribbly Grobly. Just press enter once you've uh, done it, which is the start button. And there you go. Gribbly's day out. You can then go and play that. The C64 game, which is cool. <laughs> Bit of a strange old game, but yeah. That's there if you want to play it. Kind of feels a bit strange, but yeah, it's all right. Takes a little bit of getting used to the actual controls, right enough, but kind of cool. Well, don't know what that is. Okay, so that's four out of the five games already unlocked. So just need to find the next uh, couple. Now, I believe two of them are not available as yet. I think that's Fairy, Fire and Hummings. They should be available soon. They should be unlockable by a different, a few different um, sort of button combinations. Um, one of them, Fairy Fire, was pressing the menu button ten times, um, and then that would play. But right now, it's not actually live. But it will be at uh, in a later firmware update. I believe there was issues with the game. So Fairy Fire and Hummings, which we can play on the VS, are not ready for this unit yet. But they are games that um, are going to be included in the hidden games. I'm sure they'll add a lot more as well going forward. So it's quite good to have them. Ideally, it would be nice to have some of the games that were unlockable with the, the dual carts um, like, uh, on the, the VS. But I guess there's no way of doing that on here. But it would be good to play some of the, those games. Um, I, I quite enjoyed a few of those games, but it was a bit of a pain trying to keep putting in the same two carts all the time. Anyway, let's have a look at the, the last game, the secret game. Okay, so back to the secrets. I believe I know what the, the last game should be, um, which was an unlockable game by putting in uh, this code here, which is CJ, CJ, I don't know. CJ was here. Uh, that should unlock the Kubo games, I believe. And just press the start button, and there you go. So that's the, the final game unlock. Kubo 1 and 2, and these are actually quite good fun to play. Um, you can choose between either one. And that's all the games actually unlocked for your EXP. At present, I'm sure there'll be more added. Like I said, the Fairy Fire Hummings will probably be added sometime soon. Um, and they were quite good fun. They're probably the best ones, to be honest. I'm not sure what the issue was with them. Um, but they obviously weren't working perfectly, so they removed them until they are. But anyway, that's quite good that they're actually included here. Games that maybe a lot of people haven't played yet because they were on the VS. If you don't have a VS, then you're obviously not going to have played these before. Certainly worth a bash. Um, they're not the longest game, but they're fun enough to play. Okay, so that's the five games, uh, all unlocked hidden games. Again, they'll be added to, I'm sure, quite a lot. Because we've got that 4 gig internal memory, you could probably add quite a lot of additional games. And obviously you've got your game of the month, which is coming soon. But yeah, let's have a look at some of the carts, some other games on here. And we'll go through another few things that I've found. 
Okay, so let's have a look at viewing angles before we jump onto some games. Now, this was one of the biggest issues with the original handheld. Yeah, it was still in 1.3 firmware, but you can see, as soon as you do that, the viewing angles are absolutely horrific. You have to have it point in a certain direction so that you can actually see the picture properly. Now, this was improved slightly in the purple version. Let's have a look at that now. Okay, let's have a quick look at the purple version. It was slightly better, but it's still pretty much the same issue. Um, the viewing angles are pretty horrific, but so I'm moving on to the EXP. You can clearly see that this issue is completely gone. The viewing angles are fantastic. You can see it definitely makes a massive improvement to that. Certainly the quality of this screen is far improved. One game that definitely pops is uh, Cathedral, which I'm going to pop in next. And we'll show you the comparisons between the different versions of these handhelds. Definitely the screen is far, far better. Um, it's just a pity. I think the screen size really could have been doing with being a little bit larger. Um, it's exactly the same size as the original handheld, so it would have been nice for them to squeeze another maybe half an inch, an inch, maybe squeeze up to four or five inches. Yeah, as what it is. I feel as if it's a missed opportunity. No one complained about that at the time, I guess, when this was released, uh, the original, that is. Um, but I think in this today's market, an a sort of extra larger screen would have been better. And maybe even have nudged up to HD as well, which would have been even better. But you can play it in HD on a TV mode. Now here's Cathedral in the purple version. You can hear the sound seems a lot better than the EXP. Seems quite loud. But we'll do some comparisons anyway. Um, and let's start the game, and we'll sort of do comparisons with the SAS screen. I'll put the sound in just a tad because it's a bit too loud. Okay, so you can see it looks okay, but once you actually see the difference, you'll probably be gobsmacked because um, it is quite a massive difference. You can probably look. So you think the colours just pop a lot more and there's certainly more clarity in the, the, the visuals. Um, maybe arguably the sound is okay, but it just seems it could be a little bit louder. You can probably tell here that the graphics pop, they're much sharper. Yeah, it definitely shows off this game in a better light. Let's maybe try and do a sort of comparison. You probably can't really tell too much, but you can see that the the screens are quite different. Kind of interesting that the EXP sort of screen looks a little bit washed out. The graphics are definitely different. I'll try and get a close up of that guy. He looks a bit more pixelated. And have a look at this one. And the EXP it's definitely a lot, lot smoother. And one of the good things about the tape mode is that you can revisit some of the older games that just didn't work on the handheld. Um, but you can now play them in the tape mode and it definitely gives a new lease of life to a lot of these games. You can clearly see that the sound is terrible. Though. But yeah, this certainly makes the game a little bit more enjoyable uh, and maybe more playable. I certainly enjoyed playing through a few of these again. Again, you really wouldn't want to play these games like this, would you? It just looks terrible. Okay guys, something I want to check out was the L2 and R2 button. Obviously we've got these additional buttons on the handheld, which we can then utilise some of the games that are compatible with it, which mostly are the PlayStation games. Now, I know there's a couple on here that utilise these buttons. Actual Soccer and Hardcore 4x4. This is the Gremlin Collection. So what I'm going to do is have a quick bash at Gremlin Collection and then just check out. I think you can actually uh, move the camera angles as you can see in the controls description you can change the camera angles by pressing L2 and R2 uh, in game and it actually makes the game a lot more playable because on the VS this is much more fun to play when you can sort of switch the camera angles up at your own will um, so let's have a bash at that. So on this you should be able to swivel the cameras using L2 and R2 but they don't actually work like I'm pressing them here, they should actually change the angles of the, the sort of camera and absolutely nothing is happening. It's like they've not been mapped, which is bizarre. Like you should be able to change the camera at will by pressing the, the select buttons and absolutely nothing is happening. Hmm. So actually if you go into the controls, sort of menu, you can clearly see at the bottom here that the controls are listed. 
um, you can select the camera L2 and R2 and it works on the VS because I used to play this quite a bit but nothing's happening on the EXP anyway, let's try the other game and see what happens there as well but that, that's kind of worrying the fact that you've got additional controllers uh, triggers here that really are just cosmetic they're just there for the sake of it ok on to Hardcore 4x4 and the controls L2 button should sound the horn yeah, but let's have a look see what actually happens you can see obviously these buttons are fine but I'm pressing R2 nothing ok that's not me that's the other car so I'm accelerating pressing the R2 no the horn's not working so it does appear like the, the <laughs> obviously the options there but the button mapping hasn't been completed properly I guess that's a problem with testing the testing guys really should have caught that the fact that you've got additional buttons to be used for these games specifically the PlayStation games I guess but they don't actually function that hopefully will be fixed with a firmware update but all the same it's kind of a, a bit a bit annoying a wee bit surprising and yeah that's that's really not good quality control guys that's something that should have probably been caught at some point anyway let's move on okay so the uh, the new EXP also fits in the old case as well absolutely fine you can see that that went in absolutely fine it is a little bit snug but it, it, it seems to fit fine and you can actually zip it up no problem just sort of squeeze it down and it zips up see no problem with not broke it or anything but yeah it works hey guys, fine we're, what we'll do now is have a look at the Irene collection and um, before we move on and sort of wrap up the video. There's a few good games here. Um, it's not the worst collection, probably not the best either. But if you like our type, you're gonna absolutely love it. Let's get some coins in. Watch some amazing gameplay. Yep. No doubt the emulation is absolutely top notch, fantastic. The gameplay for me is not. <laughs> I think this is possibly my favourite game. Again, in a future video, guys, I'm going to go through all the Capcom games and the Irene games on a separate video because I think it would just take up far too much time in this one video it would just be ridiculous it would last for hours so yeah, I usually do long videos but yeah that would just be crazy I'll keep them separate such a nice game colourful graphics looks really nice and this screen certainly pops it even more which is brilliant but yeah this is a nice cool game pretty hard right enough um, I believe it was from the same makers of Metal Slug um, but it looks fantastic, you can probably tell the graphics are kind of samey so what actually surprises me is the fact that they didn't put the Tua Plan collection in the box because there's a lot of tape mode, sorry, tatty mode uh, games included in that collection so I'm not sure why they wouldn't include that maybe the Irene collection was a bigger selling point as well as Capcom I guess um, just the fact that you've got that tatty mode and it's it could have been doing with some more games included but yeah that is what it is connected the EXP with a mini HDMI to my monitor so that we can play some games on the monitor um, just to show that it actually works it will play the games I think in 720p um, we'll play maybe a game or so and we'll show you that you can actually switch the tatty mode as well um, when you're in this mode but ideally you need a monitor that would swivel about um, which I don't have but yeah I'll, I'll show you it working nonetheless Okay, so just a brief sort of gameplay in the sort of monitor mode here. I normally wouldn't do this at the moment, but can I show you the game sort of playing um, outside onto a normal TV using your EXP? It's obviously an option if you don't have a, a VS. You sort of play this way. Like I say, you can switch to Tati mode, um, just a touch a button and it should work absolutely fine. Um, obviously you ideally need some kind of monitor that would swivel or even a TV if you're lucky enough to have a swivel TV I'm not sure if there's such a thing so if you press the, the sort of tatty mode button you can see it does swivel the game round about and it works 
exactly the same as well, which is quite cool. Okay guys, so time to wrap up with my final thoughts on the EXP. What does the EXP stand for? I have no idea. Experience, export, I don't know. We don't have a clue, it's probably pretty much like the VES. It's open to interpretation, it could mean absolutely anything. Um, but experience, who knows? But my experience of the EXP has been a little bit mixed. Um, there's no doubt that the design is quite nice. Um, I'd rather have probably seen a, a sort of stripe or something just to give it a slightly more retro feel. The actual feel is quite nice. It's got sort of grippy sort of plastic to it and it feels nice. Um, it does heat up quite a lot. Right enough, it is quite warm and I've been playing it for quite a few hours now. Um, and yeah, that's a, a little bit of a pain. But the battery life seems okay, it certainly seems to last for the 45 hours uh, as it's suggested. The tape mode, or the tatty mode sorry, works really well, um, there's no doubt about that. However, maybe playing it um, over a length of time might be uncomfortable, so probably want to lean that on something. The, the face buttons are absolutely fine as well, the shoulder buttons are fine, however, the, they do not work in games as yet, so firmware updated needed for that. The sound is a bit tinny, and I wasn't impressed with the sound at all. Some games are okay, but at times I felt it could be a lot louder, but it just didn't feel right. Something not right. We've got the the light bleed at the bottom here at night. Um, you'll see that quite, and it shows up quite badly. It's pretty bad around the front of the, the handheld here. Um, I don't like these buttons here, the menu button and the start and select, I feel they are really small um, and they're not really the most user friendly to touch. I've accidentally pressed the wrong button a few times. I feel the button placement sometimes, like the on off switch I've accidentally pressed as well a few times. The tape mode I've accidentally pressed. I don't really like the buttons down the bottom here either for the, the sound. Um, just not sure. Um, the the sort of design might need a a little bit of a rethink for me, but it does look nice, it feels nice, it plays the games nice, that screen is fantastic, there's no doubt that the screen is a massive improvement over the original handheld and that's probably what the big selling point will be um, for this game. The Capcom games included, pretty cool, very nice, however you can pick these up in pretty much every other console that you can think of. Um, so. I'm sure a lot of people will find this quite attractive and want to pick up um, just because Capcom's on it. And it's nice, there's no doubt to get it, it's nice, but you can get them elsewhere. I'm not deluded enough to know that, um, to not know that, but... Hmm, can I, would I recommend this to everyone? Not entirely sure. The fact it's got Wi-Fi is definitely better for upgrading um, the, the unit, maybe adding a few things that you can't do easy enough with the original and they are going to stop supporting the original after the last firmware update which is probably coming really soon so it would make sense to upgrade however it's not, I mean it is double the price of the original the original was £60 in the UK um, and now it's 120 so it's double um, the price, but I'm not really sure it's double the quality. There's a few teething issues here and there. Some of the things can be fixed with a firmware update, no doubt about it. Um, but some of the things are a little bit annoying for me that could have been fixed. It does feel like the unit has been rushed very slightly, just to sort of get it out for Christmas time, even though it was delayed. I kind of feel some things were rushed. A little bit more testing here and there would have been nice. Um, but, you know, it's kind of a, a little bit disappointing for me. It's a nice handheld, but I think I kind of expected it to be a little bit better. So, whether you're wanting to upgrade from the original handheld or wanting to sort of join on board the Evercade, it really will depend. If you want to upgrade, I'm not sure it's worth upgrading for, but if you're sort of new to the Evercade, then yeah, get on board uh, and sort of pick this up. It's a nice handheld, but certainly needs a little bit of work here and there. I think it's not perfect. It is what it is. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. I'm going to do some more in-depth views on the iRemcar and Capcom coming up soon. Thanks for watching guys. Catch you in the next one.